that young young lad, Constantine, he's a bit of a wannabe, you know. He he, he just wants to do all that good stuff, but yeah, he, he's just he's just try hard. I think that oh. would be the what you youngins say these days. He's a try hard. There you go. <laughs> Old man Hurston for you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the question and answer session here from uh, uh, the uh, the captain's table. If you missed the last episode where we talked about rivers, we talked about salvage, we talked about repair, we talked about dynamic missions, we talked about um, uh, d- uh, reputation right up there. It'll be up right above Al's, Al's head for you to click to watch that again. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this live, Go back and watch it afterwards. <laughs> we'll be back to we'll go back to the words. And we also talked about player run events such as the Crux Cup. Yes. And uh, uh, Daymar Rally, although Crux Cup, because it is coming up in two weeks' time. Yes. So if you want to see the qualifiers, uh, Cruncy will be streaming it uh, live next week, right? Yeah, qualifiers so, next week. And then, yeah. And then actual the, event week after. Week after, uh, which is uh, about midnight uh, UTC on the uh, 20th, between 19th and 20th for. So it's about about uh, 7 p.m. for us here in the United States for Eastern time uh, on the 19th. So if you want to go watch that and hang out with that one. So, um, yeah, uh, let's let's move on with the questions. We've got questions that are answering. We're going to answer from the, the chat themselves who've been asking that for myself, for individual members of the cast and for all of us as, as a whole. The first question is from Ayana Gecko, who asks, how is everyone at the table doing today? I'm doing good. Didn't sleep well, but I'm doing good. Yeah, same. Doing good. Didn't sleep well. <laughs> <But doing good. laughs> yeah, same. Didn't sleep well. The rain on the roof was uh, loud. Um, yeah. And yeah. An old man, Hurston, he's doing fine. He, he knows that Paul, he's gone off to get some liquor supplies, and he, he took a detour to the, to the orphanage as well. Yes, the orphanage. The orphanage definitely needed some new supplies that I brought them for supplies. Um. <laughs> Uh, all right, Ayana Gecko uh, then asks, is there more for Old Man Hurston? Um, uh, this is more for Old Man Hurston, but I would like to hear uh, everyone's opinion. What do you think of Constantine Hurston? Well, well I believe I already answered that question for you, youngin. I, I think he's a bit of a tryhard, you know. He, he, he just wants to do good, but he's just trying too hard. He just has to rely on his own abilities, and his skills will get him there in the end, but He's try hard, and he's a bit rude at times. You know, I've, I've seen the way he acts to people. He sees himself up here, and yet he at does, the moment he's down here. He does the finger. The finger which drives me nuts. It's like he <laughs> show up, shows up, he goes, and then, and then he just talks ignores, to you. Yes, yeah, so yeah, it's like I have to agree with old man Hurston and, and, yeah. and uh, you know, um, yeah, he's he's an absolute jerk. What a you call a jerk. You call me to help. I come in and I come in and you just, you, you put the finger on me. Like <laughs> I, I just flew all the way down here and you're going to make, no, that's not how this works. And so. You're going to make me wait. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I believe that's what old man Hurston was, was picking up. He doesn't like that, that type of attitude as you'd know, Paul being yeah. his personal barkeep. <laughs> um. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, the Hurston missions going, going different though. Cause I can see like knowing the lore behind Hurston, I'm looking forward to like the the absolute cutthroatness that Constantine because he looks like this like hello I'm very proper but I'm also very uh, very nervous about this whole thing for going from that to being like now I'd like you to murder him and yeah. bring me the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I get the pressure the impression that he he's a he's certainly trying to prove himself to the family. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas old man Hurston doesn't care anymore. He's just. He just wants to have a nice, nice, pleasant in, in time and doesn't like people bad mouthing or trying to do nasty things to Hurston and overthrow the Hurstons because that, that impacts him. Yes. But um, <laughs> I, could see missions, uh, I could see missions on Hurston being uh, helping workers escape. Mm, yeah. I'm, and, I, you know, do, doing, doing uh, sneaky missions to get them off for, or to bring them back. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Next question comes from Steve B. Dancer, who asks, what is one thing each of you look forward to this coming patch? I'll start with you, Kronzi. What are you looking forward to? Rivers. Or river. river. Singular. <laughs> uh, honestly, actually, uh, probably refueling. Um, obviously, it's not going to be exactly where it will be in like six months, 12 months time, but uh, it's a big part of the game that a lot of people have been waiting for. And uh, yeah, it should be pretty exciting. Al, what are you looking forward to at 317? I think I'd have to echo Quancy's views there, the rivers and, and refueling. 
rivers just because I think they're cool and it shows a further development of the well tech. So they're no longer necessarily doing the groundwork for the base well, they're now doing the tech that adds to the, the layers. It, I think the rivers are just as important as the outposts and the and the derelict, derelict outposts and, and things they do along those lines. They just add depth and uh, to the world and that and the rivers open so much. They, they're basically the same tech for any type of linear road or, or pathway that you want other features to take like lava glaciers or whatever so i think that's great but refueling massive because that is one of those tools that is going to be really needed when pyro comes in so yeah uh i'm gonna say selling things selling things back to shops um because i am a Cause loot you've goblin. got so much loot I've got too much loot <laughs> and I just need to sell it. Like I've, I, I literally have like seven rail guns in my Grim Hex location because I bought it for, <laughs> for jump town at some point And I just, we never lost them. So I just, I just have seven rail guns. I'm like, I got to sell this back to the shop somehow. <laughs> um, yeah. But and all that other garbage that I have, I'd like to sell so I could, I could get some, some money on it and then uh, justify my loot goblinness. So <laughs> Um, and, and empty the space that you're taking up in your in your in your inventory. I, I yes. find I go to a location and I I look for a helmet and I thought, oh, crap. where is it? Yeah. Fifty <laughs> million helmets. Like, Where's that helmet I'm looking for? But I, so, it yeah. also I think it also spells out good things for the future, like the Banu Merchantman coming in, and for players selling to players, and and further selling mechanics coming in, uh, as well as the mm. dynamic economy and such. So uh, I'm looking I'm looking forward to all that as well. So. Yeah, one of the things I'd like to hope that when you're selling stuff to a, a merchant, if if a merchant's shops are kind of set up like the uh, the uh, what's that Drake ship, uh, the privateer was privateer, yeah, uh, the Kraken privateer, where they said, okay, the stores have so much storage space in them, but if you're selling stuff to the to the stores, that that stuff will appear in their inventory as well, um, mm -hmm. and also take up some of their their storage space. So there'll, there'll be times you'll go there and they'll say. No, I don't want that. I've got, I've got fifty of those already in my store. Why do I want that one? Or yeah, I'll take it. I got fifty, so I'm only, I'm only going to give you a, a credit for it. Just say, so, you know, I'm doing you a favour. Mm -hmm. uh, or other times, I'll say, hey, I don't have any. I'll, I'll take all you've got, and I'll, I'll pay you a, a fist ton. So I'd like to see that type of development, but that certainly won't be straight off the bat. Uh, Jim Tong asks, asks the next question. <clears throat> The whole A and Scorpius coming in 3.26. It's not, supposed to be 3.17. I think, yeah, yeah, 3.17. Yeah. Uh, but not committed yet. Um, I post, uh, I posit that they will be held for Invictus in late May, but the whole A is not military, and the Scorpius never uh, uh, bought by the military. So why should they be part of Invictus? The, the Scorpius has been purchased by the military and has been used by the military. Um, so that's, that's in their promotional material, how it was used by militia and by the UE Navy. So they, they have been used by the Navy. Uh, however, 317 is still more than a month away and the whole A is actually in final, not only final art, but also damage pass and lighting. So, and that was in February that it was in damage pass and lighting. So we don't know where it is if currently. If we take sort of the history of the way that they update the roadmap, uh, ships are usually one of the last things to ever be committed to the point mm -hmm. where they might, they'll usually be committed while they're in PTU. Mm -hmm. So um, don't worry about it too much. Yeah. yeah. I think they could get moved moved around a little bit, but we'll, we'll definitely, I think we'll more than likely see it in 317 uh, proper. Uh, they rarely re release a patch without at least one ship. So. Yeah, I I, th I think certainly the hull A will come out, hull A hull B, whichever hulls they bring it will certainly come with the uh the the cargo refactor. So whenever mm -hmm. that whenever they bring that out, they'll bring those in. I think with the hull, the hull A is a bit like the the raft mm -hmm. in terms of the way it uses the cargo refactor. They looked at the raft and said, well, it's only ninety six cargo units. It's pretty much like a a Connie anyway. Yeah, we can get that in and work. But I know the original idea was put the raft in with cargo refractor. So um so I imagine that the the hull A will come in with the, the cargo refractor if they can. That just Yeah. Do with that what you will. Uh when I thought it was I thought the loss of competition. It's it's in there it's in their um it's in the the selling material. Um 
as as far as the lore goes, the theory I've been posting is positing is that the Scorpius, the Saber, and the the um, F seven A, the uh, the Lightning or is it Lightning. The F seven A is the F seven A is the Lightning because the yeah. no the F seven A is the the Hornet the the no. top grade Hornet the F eight A I'm sorry the F eight A. F8A yeah, F8A right. is lightning, yeah. So the F8A, the um, the Saber, and the Scorpius were all in competition with one another for the next generation star fighter, whatever, competition. They had different names in the lore, but they seemed to match up well with the, the whole lore thing. Um, but it seems like the even though the F8A won, both the Saber and the Scorpius are still being used by the military because the Saber shows up in um, multiple Squadron 42 videos. Um and uh, the Scorpius has been mentioned that being fly flown by the by the military as well. So it seems like the FAA was adopted, and then they just pulled the other ones in just to buy a couple of them. So it's weird. But but I but I think it also ties in with with the CDF. Yeah. Because when they develop a CDF, they actually were releasing ships or making ships specifically to arm militias, and so mm. you get the Polaris being built as as a ship for basically for militias to to be their their ship. And so, yeah, the Scorpius may not have made it as the actual military uh, main fighter, but yeah. it gets pulled in as a as an alternative heavy fighter for the militias to use. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and I, the, the, I, I don't think there becomes a problem with that. No, I, I think similar to like how the F thirty five and the F twenty two are, but were both developed at the same time in competition with one another uh, at one point, or they both they both were added in as well. So, uh, CIG is that that whole thing is still murky in that lore. So. Um, all right. Uh, Captain O'Pants asks, do you think CIG pushed the River Tech out a little too early due to the other cuts on the roadmap? I don't think we'll know really until uh, we actually like test the rivers. And if we find out that they're a completely buggy mess, then yes. But um, honestly, probably not. I, it, it seems like it's on like a, a pretty reasonable uh, development time. Like I said, we last saw stuff about the River Tech uh, about a year ago and was fairly basic. Um, I think this is more something that got completed or, or got close to completed, and they were like, "Hey, we we can chuck this in. Like, it's it's yeah. not really an issue." So, see coffee. Um, yeah. The coffee <laughs> same, same and thing. if you look, if you look at the the original stuff they brought out for the rivers, everything they said on that original document of what they wanted to do with rivers. You could actually see already done in the in the episode, with, with like, mm. you know, the EIC River Song. You could actually see that there. You could actually see it actually having been implemented. And even the things where they talked about being able to add extra foliage around around the river edge, that was stuff they talked about in the beginning as well. And mm. you're actually seeing the tools were there, so a, a, a builder could actually click it in and then go through and, and touch it up. So in terms of the implementation of a river system or the river, it doesn't seem like they've gone pushed beyond where they wanted, but it does seem they still want to test and make sure that what they've got is working when it's in the main world with everyone else. And, and you guys know, you can have stuff that working in a small world and then you put in the Efficardi and it's working, you put it into the wider PTU and it breaks. Yep. Or... Or they working in anything and put in Evercardi and it breaks. And so anything can happen. It's part of game development that things are going to go in and, and break and then you go back and rework. But at the moment, certainly that development timeline seems to have, uh, as Cronchy said, be working at the level they expected. It, I don't think it's too too early either. I think it's at the point where, where they said, oh, we can put this in, let's, let's put it in. It also seems to match up with what, how CIG develops because the big thing about um, CIG likes to put in one thing and then expand it if it's going to be have more than one. Uh, see the uh, Crusader with its with its cloud tech. They put that in and they didn't put it in with anything else and then they decided to slip it into uh, Microtech because obviously they wanted to use Microtech as an example for if they could put clouds in a terrestrial planet and it seemed to work, not to, not to tank the, the, the quality too much. Um, they did the same thing with bartenders. When bartenders first came yep. in, they only had Lorville. They didn't even they didn't have bartenders in um, in Grimhex. It was just in Lorville. 
Uh, and then when they when the bartenders started rolling out further to more more tech and new tech and updated, then they added it to everywhere at once. So uh, and now, and now they've expanded on that and they're working on the the coffee coffee, the coffee the barista vendor. Yeah. So it's just and that's just an expansion of what the what the bartender's doing is just expanding what he's doing and giving different different roles. And so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and and chats will bring, bring up Ionics bring up caves did the same thing they, they had a cave or a handful of caves and then they've just expanded it out since then so it it, it I don't think it's like a oh here's the thing because like a lot of people I think a lot of people the amount of time and effort it takes to produce these things um they didn't go oh this thing got cut let's let's quickly put something in the patch to make it to make it look more padded. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. think they necessarily are doing it, especially with like River Tech. I think it was more like, could it be added to this patch? Yes, slip it in there, you know? Yeah. Um, do I think that sometimes CIG will add things to the roadmap that shouldn't be added to the roadmap just so that it makes it look like the roadmap is a little bit more full? Yes, but CIG adds a ton of stuff we don't see. Like there was no mention of the, the fact that they moved reputation onto cargo box missions at all they didn't talk about it at all it wasn't wasn't it wasn't a roadmap thing but it's a huge deal for gameplay that they added in 316 for those of you who don't know so who may still not know you uh you get reputation for box missions and get higher payouts as you go up the, the reputation ladder uh and different types of missions so but that was never mentioned in the roadmap so i, th I do think sometimes they'll pull things onto the roadmap which are minor or smaller that they were already adding in anyways, but they didn't bother to. But when the roadmap looks a little skinny, they go, here you go, mm. here you go. <laughs> like, let's let's pump that up a little bit more. But I don't think they intentionally add things that they wouldn't have done anyways. It's just more of a, you know, the, the other way around. Uh, something was already coming, but was minor, is now suddenly yeah. a big big part. So, But the other thing to remember is the rivers are tier zero. It's not like yeah. the massive, yeah. it's, one river it that doesn't have the water ripples when you walk through it at the moment no but it does have a lot of cool stuff going for it and and it offers so much down the track as we said fishing underwater caves um harvestables that can only be gathered around rivers or water sources gives mm. you a water source for your farm so it ties into to um locations where you'll put your outpost if you want to do farming so so much that it offers and yet it also does the groundwork for roads and lava flows and even glacial flows. So that that ties into every planet and every system. So yeah, it might only be, be one river on Microtech at the moment, but that will get spawned and eventually be used everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't be surprised by the end of the year if every planet, or if or at least Hurston and, and Microtech had multiple rivers, if not at, you know mm -hmm. four or five rivers per, per planet, um, based off of how they've done things like caves. So. All right, next question comes from Ayana Gecko, who asks, with the talk of no new major gameplay coming into Star Citizen until Squadron 42 was released, what are your guesses on when Tier 0 of engineering will, or will arrive? Considering that, according to the January monthly report, the EUPU team uh, has started to work on engineering loop. Uh, Dan Truffin is awesome. All right, so let me clarify this, because I've already made a, this clarification, and I'll make it again. That is not what they said. That is not what CIG said but people seem to assume that no major things coming in until Squadron 42 is released. What they said was that the team that builds the tools for gameplay, like the actor feature team, the FPS team, those teams are primarily going to work on Squadron, and then anything that they do will be ported over to the PU teams. So the EU PU team and the US PU team are still working on Star Citizen. It's just the, the stuff that they get to make gameplay will first be added into Squadron and then move on to Star Citizen. It could mean that we get uh, things later than we should, which is what they've said in you know back in September as well. It was like it will probably come out a little bit later, but it'll be tested and a little bit more st more stable. Um, it doesn't mean that it's not coming out until Squadron comes out. It just means that it's going into Squadron first and then ported to the to to. Uh, uh, to Star Citizen. You can still have something in Squadron and still be mm. ported to Star Citizen. You can see things like Spacecaping did the same thing with like the space clouds, uh, volumetric clouds, the the infamous carts. <laughs> Hand carts <laughs> were first developed for Squadron and then they got ported over for Star Citizen and, you know, exploded everything. Well, so, you know. Even looking at the, what's coming in 317, the big thing that's coming in 317 is what? 
Rivers. Rivers. If that yeah. if that statement was true that they're not doing anything that's coming in or any new stuff coming into the PU, and I know you specifically said gameplay, mm -hmm. but if they weren't bringing anything new into the PU world because they were working on Squadron, we wouldn't have Rivers. Yeah. Or or refueling. Refueling. Yeah, or refueling. But it is. So um, but in terms of what are uh, my guesses, our guesses for TU, T0 engineering will arrive, because that was mentioned in the monthly report. Kronzi, what do you think? When do you think we'll see engineering, T0 engineering? Uh, well, using that premise, we won't see T0 engineering, because that's sort of what they're moving away from. That, that's mm -hmm. what they're talking about, is that the, the introduction of those gameplay loops to uh, the live servers won't be at a T0 stage. It'll be at close to complete. Obviously, there'll be more that they can add on to it. The The big one that's kind of been annoying me for a very long time is hacking. Mm -hmm. uh, hacking was like scheduled for end of last year, but then they canned it and said, we're doing doing it on Squadron 42 first. We're going to get it complete, then we're bringing it over. Um, so with that being said, engineering, I'm hoping we'll see something for it by the end of the year, but unlikely. I think we're more likely to see it uh, maybe midway through next year. Yeah. I'm I'm going to be a little bit more optimistic, and I think it'll come in about this time next year, maybe the the first patch of the year in 2023. But at best, I think it'll at, at like at the very earliest, we'll see it as the, the last patch of the year for this year. Mm. Maybe yeah. CitizenCon patch, but I doubt it. It'll definitely be shown off at CitizenCon, though. They'll definitely show off what they've been working on because they are if they're well, starting they, to they work on that, that. that. Yeah, if they're starting to work on it now, they 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 usually have about a six month period to develop it. So. Uh, and we saw that with like refueling. Refueling was was starting its its uh, development back in September, and then it's now done in like February. Yeah, it's finished. In mm -hmm. February, and the thing so. I liked about that the refueling one is I can remember Dan talking about uh, Dan Truffin talking about the refueling mechanism, and he was saying we were trying to work out how we were going to get the ships to be able to uh, to dock for refueling, mm -hmm. and he says, "Oh, that's that. <laughs> we'll use the same tech we used for the P fifty two. Mm -hmm. um, and that actually, the P-52 docking actually, and station docking actually solved that issue for them in terms of how we're going to get the, the ships to line up. Mm -hmm. um, and it just meant they've got to go through all the ships and put the little nozzle where they can do the fueling. But it's that type of thing that we'll see. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? When do you think we're going to get engineering there, Al? Um. That I'd like to say soon, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, because it'd be really, it would be really good to to have, not necessarily gameplay loops, but give depth to the ships, give depth to the bigger ships. So you know, hammerheads, eight nineties, reclaimers, um, you know, any of the big ships. At the moment, you know, you get a problem and and it's good. But if you've got a problem and you can and someone can actually be there, there's actually purpose for other people being on that ship apart from just being gunners. Mm -hmm. so it's certainly needed and I'm hoping it's there and I can understand why at that point you don't want it just be tier zero where it's just you know, hit it with a, a micro camera or whatever you, you're doing or with your, 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 your multi-tool you want to do something where you've actually maybe got to pull the, system, pull the old box out and put a new box in even, even at the bare minimum um, or take a, take a capacitor out and put a new capacitor in but I think like you guys I think it'll be probably the end of the year or first patch second patch next year i will say the fact that they're talking about it and they're starting to work on it is good because it also means that if they're working on engineering gameplay then the damage system is being worked on that's the one thing we don't mm -hmm. see a lot of in the monthly reports yep. is anything about the damage system though we have heard here here and there about stuff about it before the fact yep. that both salvage and engineering gameplay are being worked on should mean that the whole switch over to the different types of damage system is on is ongoing and is functioning and they're just being tight-lipped about yeah, it. Yeah, the engineering the engineering and damage is like the flip side. They're, they're flip side of each other, like um, salvage and repair are flip mm -hmm. sides of each other. And I think all four of those are kind of different facets of the same the same thing, aren't they? Like, you mm -hmm. know, you... Uh, so, even yeah. And then the engineering, even they've kind of even lumped the engineering in with atmospheric gameplay. The idea of having you know atmosphere in, in ships and having to like vent the atmosphere and then how to cycle the atmosphere and all that kind of stuff. That's part of the the the, the gameplay loop they're working on with engineering. So 
that all ties in together. So if you're worried about yeah. like, hey, when this damage stuff is coming, they're working on it. Apparently, it. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we would see some a lot of that in Squadron, uh, or well, obviously in Squadron, but in um, in Citizen Con, uh, this coming Citizen Con, uh, to display now, it. So. Now, just uh, based on what you were just saying there, Paul, it also that when you're talking about you know cycle, cycling the air and, and taking air out of a out of a room and other things. That also made me, made me think of the fire propagation. Yeah. And we know they've worked on fire for donkeys and donkeys. And so if you've got a fire in a ship, the ability to actually siphon the oxygen out of that, out of that area and starve that area or vent that, that area to space, again, starving of, of, of oxygen, are the types of things that actually do tie into... It, it does tie into that fire propagation. It does tie into the damage gameplay. It does tie into the repair and the... Mm-hmm the salvage and everything else you, you're salvaging your ship and you and you know you, you you get the sense that that door's really hot well can can we can we hack the system and and vent that room to get rid of one of it burning or, or one of it or do i open the door and get a a, a flash burn or yeah. you know so um so many options that things that those systems will actually come in and tie into everything else that gives gameplay and different aspects of gameplay I, I, I'll always say is I'm looking forward to the fire extinguisher beam because, you know, beam citizen. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to to beaming, beaming you, you, a little laser beam that shoots out like a fire retardant on things. So Well, they, they <laughs> did talk about in the monthly report. Yeah. The um, yeah. fire extinguisher. So and, and we got a sneak peek of it uh, two weeks ago as well. So. So, yeah, fire extinguisher <laughs> beams. That's right. Everything's in beam. Be, beam, <laughs> beam citizen. Um, re- reject sim, embrace the beam. Um, all right. So sand groper is next question who asks if we're getting tier zero of rivers in three seventeen, how much do you expect this to be scaled up for in three eighteen, or is it more likely to see roads in tier zero in three eighteen? Honestly, I don't expect us to see much improvement on rivers in three eighteen. Mm. I expect to see improvement on rivers in three nineteen or 320 yeah. or 4.0 or whenever that is only because they seem to take that six months to work on it. So if they're finishing rivers tier zero for 317, I wouldn't expect anything for 318 more 319. Um, yeah. And they, they have taken that, that same, you get, you get that patch where we've put something in and the next patch there seems to be nothing on. And then the patch after that, I think it'll work a bit like they did the planetary tech. Mm-hmm. You remember planetary tech came in and there was a period where you get a planetary tech and then there'd be nothing in a planetary tech. And then there was that spate where you got planet, 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 you know, yeah. and they just highlighted the things they were doing. And I think we'll see the same with, um, and we saw that with caves, and I, so I think we'll see that with rivers, and then we'll see it with roads, and then we'll see it with uh, lava flows or, or glaciers or other things as well. So I'll, I'll add that to, add to this as well. It depends on how quickly uh, Montreal can get it, can get a ha- their hand on the tools, because mm. they're the people who are going to be making those things. That's their whole purpose is to build content for Star Citizen. Um, and specifically mm. planetary content. That's why they were created is to make planets and content that they need to. Uh, and I will say this, dear God, do those people work fast? I don't know if they put something different <laughs> into the water of, of, uh, of, of Montreal, but they went from literally, if you look at the monthly report, they went from literally new, new, new crash sites to having functioning outposts built already. They have, outpost uh crash site outposts which are done they've prototyped it and they're ready to go and they're going to be adding more to it so like that was in february <laughs> they added the crash yeah, sites uh, in december so the waters are turbulent <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know bad pun. Bad pun. So bad. <laughs> just so. with that it is always uh, it's sort of just like supporting what you're saying uh it is always important to remember that the majority of the development teams work on six month cycles so mm-hmm. yeah don't don't expect something that comes out in one patch to be improved in the next patch they're likely going to work on it for the patch two after so mm-hmm. and, and once the tools are in that's when we start seeing the drop 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 yeah. drop 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 because yeah. each of the teams now has access to fiddle with all the tools and pull pull out their own content uh-huh. for it so all right Next question comes from Carbon Tails Q, who asks, what function do you see them adding to get players to take off their helmets more often? With the new face tech and all the new helmets being opaque, it feels it ne- I feel like it needs to happen. Um, there was a mention uh, last year 
when they were talking about sort of like the initial implementation of reputation and where they wanted to take it in the future. Um, if you're going to um, a person we've already talked about today, Constantine Hurston, and you've got your helmet on, you think he's giving you the time of day? No chance, right? Yeah, yeah, fingers yeah. up. Um, so that'll that'll definitely be a part of it. Uh, obviously, you'll still need to take your helmet off for uh, food and drink. Um, can't think of any of other stuff right now, yeah, but yeah. Uh, they've they've definitely it's on their mind 100. percent So Re- yeah. reputation. I, I could see even with Constantine, you know, if you if you go just in your in your flight suit with your helmet off, he'll still give you the, the mm. thing. But if you go in your in your fancy do your fancy fancy threads, yeah, uh, you're more likely to. Oh, yes, what can I do for you? You know, you yeah the the way you look is going to have an impact in terms of reputation and that's and they but I remember they talked about that years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but it always it always frustrated me with, with um, MMOs where you'd be walking through the middle of town and everyone is kitted out in absolute decked out full armor. Yeah. Uh, whereas in a DD game, if you're doing that, your GM would be on you saying, "What? You don't think we can't do our job of keeping you yeah. safe?" Exactly. <laughs> no, no. What? You're you're maligning the guard. No, no. I'm not saying that. For why? Why you're up to you know? And the whole idea of if you're if you're doing if you're kitted out to the gills with armor all over the place, what are you saying to the, the law keepers? Are you are you saying I'm going to do? I'm up to no good. Yeah. Or are you saying you don't trust them to do their job? Either way, you're you're not going to be very popular popular with those guys. I don't think you'll even get through the through the security gates. A lot. Of, I was showing this mm. on stream today. Is that there is a there are every time every landing zone when you go through these these kind of they almost kind of look like green bar. Yeah, well, they they look like they look like giant uh, like if you took like a uh, uh, an MRI machine and then like cut it in half and like stretched it out. It's got this like little circular interior and these flat walls. Yep. Um, when you walk in through 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 every single spaceport, you have to go through them. Even if you go through the um, the gates outside of Lorville, you still walk through one of those when you go into the yep. the city itself. Mm. So you're get, you're getting scanned the second you go yeah. into, and and they even call the other side of those the green zone. Yeah, and so you you've been scanned. You've got no contraband that that's on you. And, so for and. Yeah, and some places will just say, take the armor off. You, why are you walking yeah. in like, like you're about to go into war? You're going into Area 18, buddy. Go back to your <laughs> ship and take it off. Please civilians. Yeah, go take it off and come yeah, back and, in normal clothes, you know? Yeah. And, and I think the early, even the early thing with Area 18, the very first one, where you went through the area and they said, you know, basically there was a, a little box where you, eventually they said, oh, you'll put your weapons here and put they'll be taken there. away and stored for you. Um. So, yeah, yeah, and it still exists. If you look at the the models, they still have the little the little hatches where you put to get the weapons in. So, um, you know, and, whether and they give it back on the other side once they're scanned, who knows? But yeah, and, 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 the idea is not being and, and gills. And the fact that they have the reputation system is starting to evolve this year. Obviously, they're they're doing you know piece by piece. That shows that they're trying to get to that direction. Plus, things like, um, you know reputation de- degrading but also like clothing degrading and and other things they want to add like we're, we're starting to see a lot of that drop into the game where that discussion started to happen um so i think yeah that's the key is so reputation if, if clothes but, are degrading will mm-hmm. we have a um a repair tool the sewing kit no it'd be, part <laughs> of repair is beam and, uh, beams you know, uh, beam. oh sorry beam, beam. beam sorry. sewing kit uh, sewing yes. beam the, the so, sewing beam. So you can darn your socks. Yes. Patch that laser burn on, on your tuxedo. Yes, you, you, just, you put a little beam on it and repairs it with a little patch. It's, no, because so when, when, you, when you go into the um, Arlington um, and, you, you know, you, you loot the bodies that have been murdered, yeah. you've got all these suits with blood in it. You've got to, you've got to clean that off. got to clean it off, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, next now, question. Now, Ollie, you've got to stop hanging around about Al Garrett guy. I, I heard him talking about some horrid, horrible things there, you know, so... It's free. It's free, though. It's free. Free real estate. Um, <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Su- Sukara Kuno asks the Astropub at re previous conversation. Um, you know who thinks the show Ancient Aliens is stupid? Aliens. Oh God. On Office Hours, I talked about my disdain for Ancient Aliens um, and how how I hate it. I hate it with fiery passion as a historian because. 
It, it fundamentally misunderstands history in the sense that human beings are entirely possible of stacking blocks on top of other blocks. And mm-hmm. especially when alcohol is involved. And here's the, here's the key with hist- history in general. Alcohol is always involved. Lots and lots of alcohol is involved. And anyone who knows anything knows that you give people enough alcohol, they can build the pyramids in a day. (laughs) (laughs) One of my favorite things that's just like really silly. Anytime stuff of that comes up is people being like, but then why did all of these civilizations make pyramids? Um, it turns out pyramids are very stable. I don't know if you've built <laughs> built something in that shape before. Triangles are very important uh, things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if I'm on top of a hill and you're down the bottom of a hill, it's easy for me to kill you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right, next question comes from Ayana Gekka, who asks, uh, do you think there will be a fuel consumption tweak in 317 with the release of refueling in order to promote that gameplay? Quancy, what do you think? Possibly. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's hard. It's a hard one to tell. I, I also would say it depends on how far out Pyro is because we might see it not at all just because we're going to see a proper tweak uh, on, on, on release of Pyro. But um, maybe, I don't know. We, we might find out in like a week or two. Uh, so, yeah. uh, I think I'd, I think I'd agree with that that view, Crunch. Yeah, it just it just we know that Pyro is coming this year, or hope theoretically has been said mm. it's coming this year. <laughs> so we hope it's coming this year, and based on that, and we know that that's going to have an impact on on fuel and why we need why we need the refueling. And so you'd want. I imagine you'd want refueling in and tested and working before you bring Pyro where it's absolutely utterly needed. So do I think they'll do a, a retweak of fuel? Maybe, maybe not. Um, if they do, it's because they specifically want to really hone in and test that that mm. feature for mm. Pyro. But like you, I I don't think, I, I, I can't see it, but or I, I don't think it'd be in, but I could, mm. yeah. I, I honestly think that CIG is going to rely on it, it the novelty of it um, mm-hmm. uh, being tested because people will want to test it because it's cool. Uh, I think if if people stop using the system entirely, then they will go back and, and, and they need it. and they need more yeah. testing or they need more yeah. more data. Then yeah, then they'll then they'll cramp on the screws and say we want you to use this, <laughs> you know. And they'll, and they'll probably say we, we've we've cut down our fuel, we've increased fuel consumption, or we've reduced the fuel you've got because we want you to test this feature. Now, I, I will say this, CIG, if you're listening, please tell us these things because people just assume you nerf it without any any regard. So sometimes it's yeah. important to say, <laughs> say these things. So we go, oh, OK, now we know what we need to do. Usually in PTUs, though, they usually say it all the time. We're testing yep. this feature. Please do this. So, yeah. Um, uh, whew, last question. Last question. We've got a, a very short question and answer session. But that's fine with me. Um, this, uh uh, Kuno asks, what sorts of things do you guys think river tech might open up and lead to in the future? Other de- dependent tech, etc. that CIG may have not considered yet. That CIG haven't considered. Ooh. Ooh. Cause there's oh. already on, on the, uh, on the progress tracker right now, we've already got stuff for underwater biomes. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got stuff for buoyancy. So boats coming eventually, or, or ships being buoyant coming eventually. Um, I don't know. They think well, about a lot of stuff. So <laughs> ages ago, I do remember call saying on the progress tracker there was uh, boat tech. Mm-hmm. So there were actually boats. Yeah, squadron um, first, but yeah, yeah. Um, so I will say, um, ground deformation because. Mm. They have already shown that they've played around with the idea of using ground deformation, but river techs also can also uh, assume that like, hey, you can dig out this section of this river and the river will flow into these this this ditch that you've created, meaning that you can have more irrigation, maybe even actual have land land farming where you can plow the ground and 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 build those things sorts of things. Uh, I don't necessarily think that that's that's something that will happen right away, but I think that's something could easily go that direction mm-hmm. because the way that the river lays, uh, the way that it seems similar to like how like outposts lay, um, like that they literally change the terrain around them. So it's a matter of just building a tool that allows them to do those those, those changes over time. 
So, uh, and, and if they do have, if they do give the opportunity for ground deformation where you can dig a, dig a, dig a channel to, um, you know, water land further in, eventually you're going to get to the point where your impact, hopefully, where you impact the river so the river self drops, which means your irrigation system drops. Mm -hmm. And so you'll have, well, there'll be hopefully systems where we have to manage that, manage that just like mining or other areas. Mm -hmm. um, I know when they were talking the deformation, it was just one of the developers had just been mucking around in his spare time. And so they just mm -hmm. showed and say, this is what he was doing. Um, would it be nice to see that type of stuff? Yeah. The question is, would it be permanent? Or would it eventually fill in over time? And in a sense, you want yeah. it permanent, but then you get in games where it's permanent and you see people build massive. Yeah, you can't trust can't trust players with that tech. You can't trust yeah. players <laughs> if someone some someone would dig out a massive penis. Yes. Ten penis would be super hard. Yeah. Um but I think I think it will could also lead to more construction stuff. That's stuff yep. that's more complicated. Uh I'll also say I don't know. I mean, CG hasn't talked about it, but pathing, we already talked about it ourselves, like better mm. pathing for AI, you know. Oh, but they um, have talked about it. That's a, that's a nav, that's a nav, um, the nav mesh for the, for the AI yeah. so they can actually leave the cities. And I Possib think that'll be tied in with roads as well. Possibly building um, roads? Players building mm, roads? Um, players Instead building just, roads, so have a player's yeah. ability to build roads. Um, AI being able to go between, I imagine if you built a settlement, Mm -hmm. If you build an outpost on, say, Lawville, um, and you started and you had a shop there, and the AI was going to that shop, that eventually you'd have a road built, or you could actually build the road, and that mm -hmm. would encourage AI to come along as well. Yeah, but. who knows? That's the last question, which is fine. Like I said, uh, it's a short, shorter thing, but it's 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 a nice, solid questions there. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Remember, Crux Cup. Um, for us in the United States, midnight on the 20th, which is like, uh, or midnight on the 20th in, in EU, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern here in the, in the United States on the, the 19th of March. And then, of course, next week they're going to do some more time trials if you want to watch twitch.tv slash Cronsey for that. Um, and, of course, you can catch Cronsey, Al, and myself uh, on the Info Runners, uh, youtube.com slash C slash Info runners or just youtube.com slash the info runners. And you can catch us uh, live when we're doing this live on uh, Saturdays at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Actually, did that right? Yeah, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. UTC, um, where you can get ask your own questions. You can join us for the, the, the cast as well. Um, and I've always said this before which is i always look for new people to come on and hang out so um we've had a lot of new people coming and going so you can always send me an email at at the astropub at gmail.com uh, message me on discord if you're interested uh especially if you have a different perspective on star citizen say if you're a game developer or if you're a uh um i don't uh, need to imagine to execute <laughs> <laughs> oh, executes here. I see that. Uh, or, or uh, you know, uh, you have you have expertise in in specific fields that might be interesting for Star Citizen, or you've just been following the game a lot, or you're a smaller creator. It doesn't matter. You can join us there as, here as well. And uh, like I say every time, hope to see you someday in the black. Adieu. Take care. See you guys. <laughs>